Good evening, it's June 9th, and welcome to Cape Media News, your source for hyperlocal news that matters. I'm Mitch Sock. First up tonight, the Monomoy Regional School District has announced a series of key appointments designed to enhance both middle and high school education. Lindsay Parker, currently an assistant principal in New Bedford, has been named the district's inaugural curriculum director for the humanities. Additionally, Anne Marie Varela, a math interventionist at Chatham Elementary School, will take on the role of the first curriculum director for science, technology, engineering, and math. The district has also identified new leadership for its middle and high schools. Sean Dutch, previously with Brockton High School, will serve as the new assistant principal at Monomoy Regional Middle School, replacing Dr. Abby Dudley, who is advancing to the position of principal. Furthermore, Anne-Marie Rita, bringing with her a wealth of experience from Dennis Yarmouth Regional High School, has been appointed as the assistant principal at Monomoy Regional High School. The newly appointed educators will concentrate on areas including curriculum, development, instruction, and assessment for grades 5 through 12. These appointments come after a comprehensive search and interview process involving parents, faculty, staff, students, and administrators. The transition into their new roles will officially take place on July 1st, 2023. Get ready for a revving Father's Day weekend in Hyannis as the Greater Hyannis Chamber of Commerce prepares for its largest ever annual car show on June 18th. Expect a stunning array of 350 classic vehicles, hot rods, and resto mods turning Main Street into a veritable car museum. In a special treat for enthusiasts, the event will feature Shirley Muldowney, the pioneering first lady of drag racing. Festivities begin on Friday, June 16th with a classic cruise and kickoff party at Copeland Chevrolet Hyannis, featuring TV host and motorsports author Bill Stevens. The weekend gears up further with the Cape Cod Classics Car Club weekly cruise on Saturday, setting the stage for the main event on Father's Day. Every Thursday from 4 to 6 p.m., the Yarmouth Police Department, located at 340 Higgins Crowell Road, West Yarmouth, opens its doors for weekly peer recovery support meetings. These gatherings are facilitated by seasoned peer recovery specialists from Duffy Health Center, all of whom identify as being in recovery and have lived experience with substance use. These specialists offer valuable guidance utilizing their firsthand knowledge to help navigate the often complex care system. The meetings are confidential and offer a safe space for those grappling with substance use disorder or individuals seeking advice to support a loved one. Remember, you are not alone in this journey and support is available. In a serious road incident on Wednesday afternoon, both the Yarmouth Fire Department and Barnstable Fire Department, along with Massachusetts State Police, were called to the scene of a single vehicle crash on Route 6 eastbound just prior to exit 72. The vehicle veered off the road and into the woods, trapping the lone occupant inside. The challenging location and severity of the crash necessitated the use of multiple Jaws of Life extrication tools. Firefighters from multiple companies worked diligently for over an hour to successfully extricate the individual. The driver suffered serious injuries, and after being freed from the wreckage, he was transported to Cape Cod Gateway Airport by the Barnstable Fire Department. At the airport, a Boston Med Flight helicopter was waiting, ready to airlift the patient to a trauma center for further treatment. The current condition of the victim is unknown, but the, but the mother of the driver posted this to Facebook, praising the Yarmouth Fire Department, Barnstable Fire Department, and Massachusetts State Police for their efforts. In an endearing display of community outreach this week, two lucky children, Alec and Karina, were promoted to the rank of Deputy Chief for the Day by the Yarmouth Police Department. The duo joined Chief Kevin Lennon and Lieutenant Cal Bogdan on an adventurous mission to explore various locations of sweet activity in the town, from a local candy factory to the neighborhood Dairy Queen and culminating in a trip to Duncan, the day was filled with sweet discoveries. The children's duties didn't end there. They were also given a tour of the police station and met canine officer Finley. The Yarmouth Police Department extends its heartfelt thanks to Deputy Chiefs Alec and Karina for their commendable assistance. In West Yarmouth, an SUV crashed into the Cape Cod Dermatology Building on Ansel Hallett Road on Thursday morning, resulting in structural damage and minor injuries. The vehicle, driven by a 74-year-old, slammed into an unoccupied exam room around 10.15 a.m. Two people were injured in the incident, including the elderly driver, but both are expected to recover as their injuries are not life-threatening. The Yarmouth Building Inspector has since assessed the property, declaring it safe to reopen. Police are actively investigating the incident and an immediate threat license suspension has been filed against the driver. 
Former Sunday School employees Michelle White, Michael Kelly, and Robert DeMarco have joined forces to acquire both locations of Sunday School homemade ice cream in Dennisport and Harwichport. The news was announced through a Facebook post by the Cape Cod Chamber of Commerce. The trio's connection to Sunday School dates back to their teenage years when they all worked together at the Dennisport location. Michelle, in particular, has dedicated 27 summers to working at Sunday School, while also being associated with the BC Educational Resource Center. Robert and Michael have a long-standing friendship and business partnership, previously working together at Campanelli in Braintree, Massachusetts. Now they have come together with Michelle to embark on this new venture as owners of Sunday School. Despite the change in ownership, the new owners have pledged to preserve all of the cherished traditions that Sunday School has upheld over its 47-year history. In a major development, beloved hot dog restaurant, The Dog House, located at 189 Lower County Road, has made an exciting announcement. They have successfully purchased the one-stop convenience store situated across the street at 168 Lower County Road. The strategic move paves the way for The Dog House to open a state-of-the-art bakery slash coffee shop and upgrade the convenience store. Patrons can look forward to year-round baked goods, premium coffee, and an enhanced shopping experience. The bakery slash coffee shop will provide a cozy atmosphere for enjoying freshly baked treats alongside with their famous hot dogs. With a wider selection of convenience items, the upgraded store will cater to customers' daily needs. Stay tuned for updates on the grand opening date of the Dog House's expanded location. Coming up after the break, Away With Words Poetry event. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Cape Media News. I'm Mitch Sock. The third annual Away With Words poetry event held at the Hyannis Village Green showcased the transformative power of spoken word and poetry. Organized by Amplify POC, The Core July, and Polyphonic Studios LLC, in partnership with the Arts and Justice Collective, the event honored the lives of those affected by police brutality. Take a look. On May 27th, the Hyannis Village Green was the stage for an inspiring event once again the third annual Away With Words poetry event. This event was organized by Amplify POC, The Cordial Eye, and Polyphonic Studios LLC, in partnership with the Arts and Justice Collective. Away With Words provided a platform for healing and reflection through the expressive arts of spoken word and poetry. Local vendors also joined in the occasion, further enhancing the sense of community, including booths from Caribbean eateries, video production teams, and an inclusive bookshop by Belonging Books. The host of the event was the ever-charismatic poet Tamora Israel. With her contagious enthusiasm and appreciation for the power of language, she set the stage for an unforgettable afternoon of stories. Is life not so precious no matter what a person looks like? This world has become so obsessed with labels and being so involved in other people's lives that we no longer live in the moment. The underlying purpose of the event was to pay tribute to the life of George Floyd, and other black Americans who have tragically lost their lives as a result of excessive police force and police brutality. And to the police, I say this piece. If you were to treat brown faces as if they were blue, fear would subside into your human nature you could be true. I used to think of badge holders as robots, not of this place. And if that's the case, how could you love any face, especially of another, face, uh, another race? By engaging in the cathartic act of spoken word poetry, attendees sought to collectively address and continue healing from the racial trauma that scars our society. As the event unfolded, each spoken word performance became a testament to the resilience, strength, and shared experiences of both the speakers and the black community. Poets poured their heart out, crafting emotional and thought-provoking pieces that resonated deeply with the audience. A Way With Words has made it obvious for three years in a row that in the face of adversity and injustice, art can serve as a catalyst for change, healing, and transformation. The event was clearly well received in all aspects, from the food to the local vendors and to the heartfelt words of each of the event's poets, to Noah, to Xenia Pinchback, the ZYG 808, to Raza, Mualim, and Tamora herself. 
As the sun set on the Hyannis Village green, the voices that reverberated through the air carried a profound message. One that urged society to acknowledge the pain and injustice suffered by marginalized communities and to work towards a future where equality and justice prevail. For Cape Media News, I'm Ryan Thompson. A local Cape Cod bar manager has gone viral this week and is under investigation by Barnstable PD and the Cape and Islands DA's office for use of racial slurs and threats. For more on this developing story, here's Ryan Downs. Hi, you got the wrong guy. You're on more video than you've ever seen in your life. All right, cool. And you're not? You said you were going to shoot me in the head. Well, there were no fireworks in the sky over Memorial Day weekend on Cape, there were some in the streets. An incident that garnered widespread attention, the manager of Trader Ed's, a popular bar and restaurant on Cape Cod, is currently under investigation by Barnstable Police Department and the District Attorney's Office. The investigation follows the emergence of a video showing Trader Ed's manager, John Shea, using racial slurs and displaying aggressive behavior towards another individual. You're in my town. You're an idiot. Your town, your town, show. your town. When the Pope po shows My up. state. Okay. Look up my family. Yeah, my state, you. your town. Dude, look at nice, my family. Nice boots. They don't look like right. you. Nice right. boots. All right. All right. All right. Okay. My family don't look like you. Nice boots. And I don't sell drugs. Nice boots. You guys are both not doing anything beneficial. Go f yourself, monkey. Nice boots, dude. You're a monkey. Because that makes so. You know where I am? Get the f out of my town. Get the f out of my town. You use my name again. You'll end up in a grave. Right name again. You'll end up in a grave. You and all your friends. I just told you what I just said. Say it again. Turn around. <laughs> Say it again. He's saying brother. You're calling me the N word? I just called you the N word. Why? Because you act like one. And you called him names. I'm going to call Popo. Yes, do please, it, do. please do. It's probably your dad. You're going to uh, fake, uh, fake uh, phone call. After you call me the N word, you're gonna make a fake phone you're call. You're literally in my call. settings. Yes, out of my phone. I'm not doing anything to you. Don't step on my foot. I'm sorry. That's assault. And that's assault. After calling me the N word, that's assault. Do it. I'm a what? You're a nice guy. The incident was reported by Million Phillips, who claimed to have witnessed Shay drinking and driving. Concerned for public safety, Phillips called the police but it is believed that Shea became aware of the call. This led to Shea approaching Phillips and harassing him. In the video, Shea can be heard aggressively asserting his identity and demanding Phillips leave town. Shea threatens Phillips that mentioning his name again could result in grave consequences. Shea then confirms using a racial slur when Phillips questions him about it, justifying it by stating that Phillips acts like one. The incident took place on Main Street in Hyannis near the Embargo restaurant. Video capturing the altercation was posted on the popular What's the Word Mass Instagram page, quickly amassing over 180,000 views and 600 comments within 24 hours. Trader Ed's, a popular establishment among locals and visitors alike, now finds itself at the center of controversy and facing a damaging impact on its reputation. Many of the comments expressed dismay, stating that such behavior was typical of Shay. Disturbingly, there has also been several claims made by individuals warning females to avoid Shay's businesses, alleging a fear of drinks being tampered with. As the debacle unfolds, the Trader Ed's business account defended Shay on social media. Since then, all Trader Ed's accounts have been suspended on the platforms. When reached for comment, Shay declined to provide further details about the incident, citing his attorney's advice. However, the Barnstable Police Department has confirmed that they are treating the incident as a possible hate crime and are actively investigating the matter. It is recommended that concerned individuals seek updates from reliable news sources or official statements from the Barnstable Police Department to stay informed about the case's developments. For Cape Media News, I'm Ryan Downs. Coming up after the break, the Cordial Eyes new public mural. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Cape Media News, I'm Mitch Suck. Despite facing opposition from the Hyannis Main Street Waterfront Historic District Commission, local arts organization, the Cordial Eye, and a local high school student have brought a new and collaborative public mural to Hyannis Main Street. For more on this story, here's Christian Garnett. My name is Mary George, and I'm the co-executive director of the Cordial Eye. 
My name is Anastasi Pacella, also co-executive director of the Corps July. We are proposing the creation of a pilot community art wall created by affixing plywood to brick and managed by the Cordial Eye Gallery and Artist Space with the Hyannis Public Library with support from key stakeholders in the neighborhood. The Hyannis Community Art Wall, located on the eastern exterior wall of the Hyannis Public Library on Main Street, is a public art project organized by the Cordial Eye a community arts organization founded by local artist Anastasi Pacella. The project is planned to be in place for a one-year period and consists of wood panels that can be drawn and painted on by visitors to create an ever-evolving mural that represents our community's collective ideas. The opening day event on May 21st brought together upwards of 300 artists of all ages and skill levels to contribute to the mural's initial look. The idea for the mural came from local high schooler Will Kalo, and the community showed overwhelming support for the project, with nearly 40 letters of community support received during the initial planning phase. I am William Kalo. I'm a student at the Sturgis West Charter High School. I've been an artist my entire life. I'm going to pursue art in college and in a career. I believe very heavily in the power of art and the importance of art in fostering community. I believe that Art is an, an essential piece of expression, a, a style of, a part of communication as important as speech. I, I want a wall, a community art wall here, because I believe that what this community can create on it will be beautiful. I think the expressions that are possible on this wall are expressions only possible through that wall. I've been working with this project and I've been passionate for it for over two years now. I truly believe in the beauty that this project will create, and I hope that you will as well. With that said, the art wall received surprising pushback from the Hyannis Main Street Waterfront Historic District Commission when it was initially proposed on April 19th. Who belongs on Cape Cod? Can you explain that to me? We think we all belong here. I do too. And, and why, why is that in there that you're gonna define who belongs on Cape Cod? We're not defining it. We're trying to expand the notion of who belongs on Cape Cod. And we have found through our community work and through our lives as community members that there are many systems in our community that are set up for those living or working within certain dominant cultures. And we want to create a space to amplify the voices and needs of those that are living and working outside of those dominant cultures. So, and, and, and again, and you, you talk in, in your mission statement about uh, black, indigenous, people of color, uh, lesbians, uh, gays, and also um, financial people with financial needs. Is that going to be the main focus of your art? No. And so it's not the content of the art itself that's, that's expressing our mission. It's, it's not, you know, it, it's, I have nothing against any of those groups, you know, and, but other people do. And other people could find that offensive, and here it is in a historic district, okay? that other people could find offensive that we're representing communities of color or? It ha it's real life, okay? Uh, I, and it, it happens, you know, uh, and it's going to be in, in Hyannis. Uh, I mean, I'm not, I, I understand that there are people in communities worldwide that get offended by all manners of things, but um, I'm finding it a little bit confusing and, and disturbing to want to say that we don't want to represent community members like of their I'm basic not, identities I'm because not saying that I'm asking is this is this what's going to is this the people you're going to identify on this with this is is this your communities that you want to represent it's in your mission statement is that going to be on the art wall if community members choose to add to the art wall in a way that depicts their identities in various ways that's that's kind of their their prerogative. Um, the wall includes free expression space. My biggest problem is I don't think it dis belongs in the his uh, historic society uh, district. We don't want to be blamed for a riot. Is it possible just to, to keep on that theme of bringing it inside, look, reducing the size, and uh, having more of an expressive of community art and indoor community art program inside the, the library? I mean, it still wouldn't. It wouldn't meet the need that this wall is trying to meet. So if there were like an expressive community arts indoor project, it would be something fundamentally different from what this is. We could do this wall anywhere. Why 
in the historic district, if that's what we're going to do. So I have a little concern there. I think that's my main point, too. It doesn't belong in the historic district. Would you consider just doing it to children and limiting it for this pilot at the high school? You have, you have the high school all the way up to high school aged contributors. Again, we feel that that really adjusts the nature of what this project is supposed to be. We're willing to amend the timeline. We're willing to put additional guidelines in place, but we're, we are just asking for, for a chance, for a chance to see what could be here in this community with a little bit of, a little bit of faith. The cordial eye assured the Hyannis Main Street Waterfront Historic District Commission that measures are in place to prevent the display of obscenity, hate speech, and explicit content. Unfortunately, it didn't take long for the wall to be defaced on Friday, June 2nd. Hey friends, thanks for your kind messages of support. Um, we uh, pretty much have the situation under control here. And in a surprising twist of fate, uh, while I was getting supplies to, you know, do what we need to do, the kids came back <laughs> and uh, Craig was able to give them a stern but fair talking to uh, their 10 year old children and just didn't understand the broader implications, the harm of those specific slurs, and then, you know, how that impacts like our unhoused neighbors who get blamed for this kind of all the time. Um, and they, they seem to have some empathy. So that's like really, you know, I'm glad we were able to have a little bit of, uh, I don't know, create like a situation of care where these kids were able to understand rather than, you know, getting yelled at and shutting down. Luckily, artists from around the community swiftly covered it up, turning this unfortunate occurrence into an opportunity for new art. To contribute to the art wall, individuals can sign in with a staff member at the front desk of the Hyannis Public Library. Painting outside of the library's operating hours is discouraged, but alternative arrangements can be made through the library's website for those facing access barriers. For inquiries or concerns about the community art wall, individuals can contact The Cordial Eye at info at thecordialeye.org. I'm Christian Garnett, and this is Cape Media News. Thank you for joining us this evening. If you have a story you'd like to see covered, send us an email at newstip at capemedia.org. Be sure to tune in next week for more hyper-local news that matters on Channel 99, Apple TV, Roku, and Fire TV. For Cape Media News, I'm Mitch Sock.